straight into the roof of the net. Nice one. Straight down the middle. So a good performance from both teams. Hello and welcome to First Sports. I'm Rupa Ramani. Let's get started. Right on the show today, can Bangladesh men's cricket team do the unthinkable and halt India's winning streak at home, especially in the longer format? We'll tell you how the beleaguered country is trying to get some joy via the cricket team. Meanwhile, Cyprus Football Association and the Cyprus government are at loggerheads at the heart of the matter, banning fans from away to visit and watch football. Why such a harsh ruling and what could be the consequences of this fallout? And Donald Trump's statement around Haiti and Haitians eating dogs and cats has backfired and has created a bit of a flutter in the sporting world. One of the NBA franchises, Miami Heat, have stepped up to hit back at Trump. More on that, more on that in the show later on. But first, look at the headlines. Starting with news from hockey, India beat China 1-0 to retain their Asian Champions Trophy title. Jugraj Singh scored the winner for India in the 51st minute. This is India's fifth Asian Champions Trophy title. Over in tennis, world number one no Yannick Sinner has added two new trainers in his coaching staff. Both of these coaches have previously worked with 24-time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic. Marco Panici joins as the fitness coach and Ulysses Bedio takes over as the physiotherapist. Sinner had fired his previous staff post the doping scandal. Over in football, Spain's World, World Cup winning midfielder Aitana Bonmati has extended her contract with Barcelona, confirming her continued stint with the club till 2028. Reports say her new contract will make her the highest paid female player in the world. She has over 290 appearances for the club and has scored 96 goals across competitions. American gymnast Jordan Chales has now appealed to Switzerland's Federal Supreme Court for reinstating her bronze medal at Paris Olympics. Chales' two earlier appeals, remember, had been rejected by the Court of Arbitration. For sport, Romania's Anna Barboso had received the bronze instead following a CAS ruling. And in cricket, in a massive decision taken by the International Cricket Council or the ICC around $8 million, will be rewarded in prize money in the upcoming Women's T20 World Cup. The winning team will take away 2.34 million US dollars, which is more than double of the last edition's prize money. The World Cup will take place from the 3rd of October to the 20th. India versus Bangladesh. It's a test series that's starting in a day. Why are we talking about this test, you may ask? It's Bangladesh after all. And an Indian test side, even though they failed to clinch the test championship twice now, is still going to be the more dominant side heading into this against Bangladesh. But there are enough reasons why this is going to be an exciting series to watch out for. The first one, of course, is the form that Bangladesh finds itself in coming into this one. They had a massive win over Pakistan in Pakistan. It was quite a strong performance, a whitewash, and so we are setting this one up as a test India needs to be wary about. There should be some sense of concern heading into this one. Because Bangladesh has won very few tests, around eight, but they've won the majority of those, four of those, from post-2021. They're surely coming in hot. Their captain is all praise of the process they have put in place. Somehow the situation back home has fueled the team to band together and deliver. Their recent triumph over Pakistan has in fact brought them all together and this test will be their biggest challenge and can only help in inspiring them. After a good series, there is definitely an extra confidence in the team, in the people of the country. Every series is an opportunity. We will play to win both matches. The things that matter to win, the process matters. Good results are possible if we do our job properly. Meeting them is a side that's a monster in defending their home record. India is on a 17-match winning streak at home. So it will be difficult to threaten these boys in the test format. The Rohit Sharma-led side has their sights set on test championship, of course. So every single match is key and every win counts, more so at home, in front of 
home fans. But can India be in trouble here? Can Bangladesh do the unthinkable and upset India? A former India cricketer certainly thinks so. They have some fine players in their ranks and some new promising players who no longer have the awe of the opposition. Now, every team that play them know they can't put their guard down as they could be knocked down as the Pakistanis found out. It will certainly be a series to look forward to. The test also sees the return of Delhi batter and wicketkeeper Rishabh Panth, a maverick batter keeper in the format he most revels in. Now, we saw him, of course, make a comeback after his horrific accident in the T20Is and ODI cricket, but how does he take to tests? The longer format. That's something we will, of course, be keenly watching. The other most exciting aspect to look out for is the spinners in Chepok, the stadium in Chennai where the first test will begin from the 19th of September. After India crumbled against Sri Lanka in the ODI series, particularly falling to spin, the battle between Bangladesh's spinners led by Shakib Al Hassan against India's batters will be a keen contest. That may well be the deciding factor, the one thing that could really tilt the match in favour and help in deciding which of the two teams comes out on top. And it's not just that, it doesn't just have the best spinners, the team that doesn't have the best spinners alone, but also plays spin better will really be the one coming out trump trumps. Just Preet Bumrah stands tall when it comes to the pace units of both the sides. He's the b biggest threat here, but to what extent when the support may not be as lethal, especially from the other end. Bangladesh is coming in high on confidence, especially with their pace unit really performing against Pakistan. So it is a battle of momentum versus past records. And maybe the team that adapts to the conditions quickly will set the ball rolling in this one. Cyprus, the island located in the Mediterranean Sea, is always torn between Europe and Asia when it comes to cultural, linguistic and historic influences. Somehow managed to find itself leaning towards Europe, especially when it comes to football. Cyprus is more European than Asian in this regard because the passion fans have when it comes to football is much like what any other European nation displays not just in terms of the cultural impact, the 1.3 million strong population can unfortunately match the level of hooliganism and violence like any other European nation. I say unfortunately because it's not something that Cyprus is particularly proud of. It is the reality the island nation has come to terms with. Now, after the latest episode, authorities have come in to take severe action. The aftermath of which has drawn battle lines between the government and the Cyprus Football Association. But before we get to that, let's focus on what has happened. A first division match between crosstown rivals, Apollon Limassol and AEL Limassol was cancelled. It was Apollon's home match. They were hosting AEL and what ended up happening was that the visiting fans of AEL clashed with police outside the stadium. The fans refused to undergo the mandatory security checks and they refused to show their tickets as well at the gate. They just rushed into the stadium. The violence didn't end here. Police asked the fans to empty the stadium and go back through to get proper security checks done and re-enter the stadium so the match could start. The security did everything they possibly could to get the match going. But this violent bunch of fans were ultras. A section refused to even leave the stadium. And those who did ended up clashing with the police even hurling rocks and other projectiles, which resulted in three officers sustaining injuries. The matter soon turned chaotic. Police managed to arrest four people and upon detaining Two 17-year-olds, they even confiscated metal bars and balaclavas, the ninja-like masks to prevent identification. Cyprus police claimed to have found bags even containing powerful flares. So these fans, of course, came with an agenda, a motive to play party pooper and turn things ugly. They wanted to create a scene during the match. There's a reason to this, of course. It was going to be 
a form of protest against the Cyprus government's intention to extend a full ban on all away team fans. Something that was done last year with the sole intention to curb violence. The irony? They thought violence and hooliganism was the way to protest. The government, of course, is enraged with this turn of events. Everyone needs to take responsibility, particularly the CFA's leadership and the chairman. They should not hide behind their self-governing structure. They have responsibilities. We warned them about all of this, but they continue to hide. And while the government wants Cyprus Football Association to ban the away fans from the stadium entirely, the association continues to hold its ground. They are allowed a maximum of 800 away fans for this season. So what's the right thing to do here? It's good that Cyprus Association is standing its ground, holding steady. Now I'm not backing any form of violence here. Cyprus Football Association needs to take decisions pertaining to the sport without any duress from the government. But the association needs to also give answers. Are they doing enough to curb violence in the first place? Are they protecting the sanctity of the sport in their own country? Because just like how sports doesn't support the involvement of the government, it also shouldn't fuel or give room to any form of violence. Because the Apollon Limassol and AEL Limassol match isn't just an isolated incident, this being called off. Cyprus has a history. Earlier this year, the Cyprus Cup derby between the same sides was cancelled due to violent incidents that broke out. Four people were arrested for preventing the match between these two sides to even take place. In 2023, over 100 hooded and masked men broke into Limassol, which resulted in property damages and injuries to a 21-year-old. In 2022 as well, before the match between the very same opponents, fans of both sections set fires and hurled chunks of concrete and plastic seats at each other. The fight continued even outside the stadium. The hooligans even damaged shops and cars around. So it's not like the recent incident is a standalone one. The government resorting to such a drastic step has come on the back of a series of such acts. Fans have a history of not just clashing with police, but also rowdy behavior damaging property. In the latest episode too, around 300 police officers worked overtime to cover the game and try to keep things in order. It seems like the association is fighting a losing battle though with the government. Past instances aren't helping and the continuation of hooliganism unchecked is not really helping either. But what could be the ramifications of this? One, of course, the standoff between the government and the association itself. That has to be resolved. The other, of course, is to maintain the health of the sport in the nation. And fans form a really key part of that. The reason that contributes to the success of any sport world over. Is this ban going to put the future of football in Cyprus itself under serious threat is the question. The US elections are less than two months away and with only a handful of days left for the big day, shots continue to fire between the two presidential candidates, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. But some of those exchanges have led to a major backlash, like the one where Republican candidate Donald Trump targeted the Haiti community living in the country, accusing the immigrants, especially, especially the Haitians, of eating dogs and cats. That, of course, has had its repercussions in the sporting world too. Our NBA franchise, Miami Heat, have slammed Trump, sending shockwaves. Here's a report. Donald Trump did everything to strengthen his candidature for the US elections. Targeting his opponent, Kamala Harris, and obviously targeting the immigrants. But little did he realize that with certain allegations, he was shooting himself in the foot. In Springfield, they are eating the dogs. The people that came in, they are eating the cats. They are eating the pets of the people that live there. Trump may have taken a dig at the community living in Springfield, Ohio. But the aftermath was experienced all over the United States of America. And the biggest explosion occurred 1,300 miles away from Springfield in Miami-Dade. NBA franchise Miami Heat sent in a stinging response. They defended the Haitian community by issuing a strong statement.
Now, the Miami-Dade County comprises of more than 30,000 Haitians. And a major chunk of staff members and Heat fans are in fact the Haitians. The NBA team felt it was necessary to stand up for them. So while the intention of the three-time NBA winners was not to get pulled into a political fracas, they felt it was imperative to show their support for their fans and staff members. And that alone led to many reactions across social media. An NBA franchise making such sharp statements against one of the presidential candidates could hurt Trump's candidature. Because basketball is huge in the USA. The 2022 NBA Finals had an average viewership of 12 million. That is 22% higher than last year's final. Majority of these viewers are American. The main NBA account on Instagram has close to 90 million followers. And given the social media presence of Miami Heat, 20 million across all platforms. The statement was heard loud and clear and is bound to have repercussions. Quite an ironic turn of events though, because just over a year ago, Trump had received a rousing reception when he had made a surprise appearance at the UFC 287 in Miami. He has gone from being cheered to being booed. We'll wait to see what the impact of one post from a sports franchise, the Miami Heat, could do. It was a slam dunk Trump was clearly not expecting. Time for last serve. Celebrities reigned in on a football game in Birmingham. Tom Brady, David Beckham and Rob McElhinney were in attendance during the Hollywood Derby, adding some oomph to a third division football game. Take a look. That wraps it up here on First Sports. Thank you for tuning in. As always, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.